Greetings. Thank you for joining us. This is Aaron Norberg with Sigma, and today I'd like to share a quick walkthrough of Sigma's USB dock accessory and try to make sense of how it may be of benefit to you. So let's start by laying out what exactly the USB dock is and what it can allow you to do. The USB dock allows us to bridge the hardware in your lens to Sigma's Optimization Pro software on your computer. If you haven't heard this concept before, you may find yourself wondering why you'd ever want to connect a lens to your computer in the first place. Most lenses today are made up of much more than just glass. Almost every lens that features autofocus now also contains electronic circuits within that enable the lens to communicate with the camera it's mounted to. Think of firmware as the operating system for these electronics. It dictates how the lens functions and how it communicates with your camera. Being able to connect the hardware in your lens to Sigma Optimization Pro allows us to update and to modify that lens firmware, and therefore to improve and to customize how your lens communicates with your camera. Now that we know a little bit more about what the USB dock does, let's take a closer look at how exactly we do it. The first step is to open Sigma Optimization Pro on your computer. If you don't already have the software installed, you can find it by navigating to the service and support page of sigmaphoto.com under the downloads link. Once Optimization Pro is open, go ahead and connect the USB dock to your computer. Now we're ready to attach our lens. The USB dock mounts just as your camera does. Line up the mount indicators and twist until you hear it click. Once it's connected, the LED indicator on the USB dock will illuminate. With the lens connected, Optimization Pro will load up the specifics of the attached lens and will automatically check to see if there's a more recent firmware version available. If a newer version of firmware is available, Optimization Pro will display this prompt. If the landing page loads with no prompt, that means that your lens's firmware is current. If you'd like to manually recheck, you can do so by selecting the Firmware Update button. Now, it looks as though this lens does have an update available, so at this point we can either decline the update by selecting Later, or we can initiate the update by selecting Yes. If you'd like to see what changes this most recent firmware version affects, you can see a detailed listing by selecting Detailed Information. Once we're ready to update, simply go ahead and select Yes. Once you do, Optimization Pro will caution you not to disrupt the connection while the firmware update is in process. It's important to remember that we're essentially rewriting the operating system to the lens here, and if we were to interrupt the process, the lens may not be able to communicate with other devices. So ensure your computer has a steady and reliable power supply and internet connection, and select Agree to continue. Optimization Pro will now save any prior customizations and load the new firmware to the lens directly, with no need for you to manually manage or install the new firmware file yourself. Once the new firmware has been loaded and any prior customizations have been reapplied, Optimization Pro will notify you that the process is complete. Once we're back on the landing page, it's safe to disconnect your lens. If all you need to do is update the firmware of your lens, now you're all set. If you'd like to take a look at what lens functions can be customized, let's hop back into Optimization Pro. Just below the firmware update button, you'll find another option labeled Customization. Let's click on that and see what we can get into. In the customization menu, we see four options listed. Now, not every lens will be compatible with every customization option. If the attached lens isn't compatible with one of these customizations, you'll find that the customization setting is a lighter gray and is not selectable. Our first option here, focus setting, is available for every Sigma Global Vision lens compatible with the USB dock. So let's take a look at this one first. If you find that your camera and lens combination are experiencing back or front focusing, this is the best place to address it. Fine-tuning autofocus operations in the camera body typically only gives you a single adjustment for the entire operating range of the lens. As optics shift inside the lens to achieve focus and or to achieve different focal lengths, the focus settings too can shift. Now if we try to correct for these settings in the camera, we may really only be shifting the problem to another focal length or focusing distance. By making the adjustments here in Optimization Pro, we can apply any needed corrections to the specific focusing distance or focal lengths needed without negatively impacting other areas of the lens's performance. Here we'll find four different focusing distances that can be adjusted for for prime lenses, 
or four different distances amongst four different focal lengths for zoom lenses. To shift focus towards the camera for a given distance, you'll want to enter a negative adjustment. To shift focus away from the camera, you'll want to enter a positive adjustment. Once you've entered your adjustments, select the rewriting button to save your changes. It's important to note that these adjustment values here don't necessarily correlate to any unit of distance. To make these adjustments accurately, you'll want to shoot against a lens calibration target, make your adjustments in Optimization Pro, and then reshoot that target to make sure that you've moved focus appropriately. If you don't have access to a lens calibration target, or if this whole process sounds like more than you want to get into, not to worry. Sigma will take care of lens calibration for you under our four-year warranty. To do so, you'll simply need to direct both the lens and your camera body to Sigma's repair facility. You can initiate this service through your nearest authorized dealer, or you can do so yourself by completing an RMA request form on the service and support page of sigmaphoto.com. Jumping back into Optimization Pro, our next customization option is full-time MF setting. This option allows you to assert manual focus control even when the camera is in an autofocus mode. We can also adjust the sensitivity of the focusing ring, which affects how far the ring must be turned before the camera recognizes that we're manually focusing for this image. A lower value correlates to a quicker transition into manual focus, whereas a higher value will take longer to switch over from autofocus. Once you've made your changes here, select rewriting to save them to your lens. Our next customization option allows the programming of the action of a dedicated AF function button. Currently amongst the lenses compatible with the USB dock, this button is only found on the 70-200 f2.8 sports. For Nikon and Sigma mount lenses, we can program the button to either initiate autofocus operation as an AF on button, or to lock autofocus as an AF L button. For Canon mount lenses, the functionality of this button can be programmed from the camera's menu. And that brings us to our last option in the customization menu, the customization mode setting. As with the AF function, this option allows for the programming of a dedicated custom switch. The custom function switch is a little more common though. Currently it can be found on the 100-400 and 150-600 millimeter lenses in the contemporary family, along with the 60-600, 70-200, 120-300, 150-600, and 500 millimeter lenses in the sports family. Selecting the Customization Mode setting button will bring up the C1 and C2 options that correspond to the C1 and C2 positions found on the physical switch of applicable lenses. Let's take a closer look at what we can customize for either setting. For either custom mode position, we can affect any combination of autofocus tracking speed, focus limiter distances, and or optical stabilization performance. Let's take a look at these options one by one. In the AF Speed Settings submenu, we're presented with three options. Fast Autofocus Priority, Standard Autofocus, and Smooth Autofocus Priority. In Fast Autofocus Priority, the lens will prioritize the speed of autofocus acquisition and tracking to reach and maintain the point of focus as quickly as possible. This setting can help your camera to keep pace with quickly moving subjects, but it could also lead to missed focus if your camera is unsure of which autofocus point to use in tracking your subject. For this reason, I generally recommend using this setting when your subject can be easily identified within the imaging frame. Smooth autofocus priority, by contrast, will temper the speed of autofocus tracking to reach the point of focus as smoothly as possible. This setting can be helpful in scenes where there are objects between you and your subject that your camera may be confused by. Smooth autofocus priority can also be very helpful when recording video with autofocus, where fast transitions from point to point may be visually jarring to the viewer. By default, the lens is set up for a compromise between fast autofocus and smooth autofocus priorities, and it will revert back to standard autofocus when the custom switch is in the off position. Jumping back into the custom mode screen, our next option is the focus limiter setting. Selecting this option brings up the full range that the attached lens is capable of focusing through, with sliders on both the near and the far side that can be adjusted to limit the range that the lens will use. If you're working in a relatively controlled environment where you know the approximate distance between yourself and your subject, you can use this setting to limit the range that the lens will try to focus through. Generally speaking, the shorter the range, the faster your autofocus acquisition and tracking will be. 
It is important to keep in mind, though, that when this setting is active on the custom mode switch, the lens will not be able to focus outside of the range that you've pre-selected here. Back once more to the custom mode setting menu, our final option is the OS setting. Similar to the AF speed setting menu, here we find three options. Dynamic view mode, standard, and moderate view mode. In dynamic view mode, the lens will prioritize the optical stabilization to compensate for the highest degree of camera motion possible. This setting will likely present an obvious shifting of the image projected into the viewfinder as the optics in the lens shift to adjust for camera motion. In moderate view mode, the lens will prioritize the optical stabilization to reduce the shifting of the image projected by the lens. This mode generally won't be able to compensate for quite the same degree of camera motion, but the image will appear more natural in the viewfinder. And this can be helpful when positioning of your subjects near the edge of the imaging frame is critical, or when recording video where abrupt shifts in the image could be visually jarring to your viewer. By default, the lens is set up for a compromise between dynamic and moderate view modes, and the lens will revert back to this standard setting when the custom mode switch is in the off position. So that covers all of the three options for customizing lenses that feature the custom function switch. You can program any combination of these three options for either the C1 or the C2 positions. Once you've chosen your settings, select Rewriting to save those changes to the lens and return to the customization menu. If you ever need to remove any of these lens customizations and return the lens back to its factory standards, you can easily do so here too by selecting the Reset All button. And with that, we've covered all the current features and functions of the USB Dock and Sigma Optimization Pro. It's worth noting that the USB Dock is only compatible with DSLR mount versions of Sigma's global vision lenses. That is, lenses in the contemporary, art, and sports series offered in Sigma, Canon EF, Nikon F, or Sony A mounts. For Sigma's DN mirrorless lenses, Firmware updates and button customizations can be accomplished through the camera body itself, with no need for the USB dock. And because mirrorless cameras take their autofocus measurements off the actual imaging sensor, there's no need for focus calibration with these lenses. Well, thanks for watching. I hope that helps to clarify what the USB dock can do and whether or not that may prove useful for you. If you'd like to hear more from Sigma, you can find us on Facebook and on Instagram. Until next time, Take care.